Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, This Rise, and in this video, we will discuss about the deductions from gross gifts and as well as the computation of donor stocks. So, if you're ready, let's start! So in our past video, we have discussed already the gross gift and how they are valued and we have already an idea of on how to compute the donor stocks. But in this video, we will discuss what are the items that are allowed to be deducted from our gross gift and how do we compute donor stocks. So let us have first a sort of recap for the computation of the donor tax. As we have mentioned, we have the current gross gift. We will deduct the deductions allowable from, from the gross gift. Then we will get the current net gift. And we will add all those prior net gifts made within the same year. And then we will have the total net gifts. Then we will deduct the exemption limit, the exemption threshold, which is 200 50,000 pesos, which is actually the amount or ex of exemption for the entire year, okay? And then we will get the taxable net gifts. And from the taxable net gifts, we will just multiply by 6% to get the donor tax due. And if there are donor taxes paid previously, we will deduct those taxes from the donor tax due to get the donor tax due and payable and we have discussed that already in our video about the concept of donor tax so the following shall be allowed to be deducted from the gross gift like the income tax the estate tax when computing donor tax we also have several items which could be deducted from the gross gift to arrive with the taxable net gift and these are called the allowable deductions so number one we have the gift to the national government or to any of its political subdivisions or agency as we have mentioned when we discuss the gross gift um, donations to the national government or to any political subdivision the local government or to any agencies made and created by them um, that is exempted from donor tax that is actually correct but in computing donor tax um, these donations to those agencies in government uh, organization should still be added to the gross gift but later on deducted in the deduction so here it is so it is added to the gross gift but in the deductions it will also be allowed as deductions okay also donations or gifts in favor of educational charitable religious cultural and social welfare institutions etc are also or may also be deducted from the gross gift and as i have said those gifts are actually exempted by the law according to our tax code but um even though they are exempted still they should be added to the gross gift and later on claimed as deduction from the gross gift the logic or the reason for that is we just want to declare uh, the correct amount of donations okay so again those uh donations to these institutions to non-government organizations are subject to the 30 percent rule that is not more than 30 percent of such donation is used for admin purposes and another deduction allowed for uh, donor tax is mortgages obligations and other encumbrances on property donated when we say encumbrances these are obligations or liabilities which are attached to the property or thing being donated and is assumed by the donor. for example if i am the donor and i want to give you a real property but this real property was actually subjected to a mortgage i have loaned this property but i want to give you this property so what will i do is that i will give you i will donate this property to you but at the same time i will also attach the loan or the mortgage to this property so there is an attached liability and if you assume the property you said okay i will accept that 
So it means that you accepted the property at the same time, you accepted that you will be responsible to pay the obligations attached to that property. From now on, you will be the one who would pay the corresponding or the attached mortgages of that property. So that is what is meant by encumbrances. So anything, any obligations attached to the donated property. So those could be deducted, allowed for deduction from the gross gift. And another um, item is that diminution of the value of the property. Diminution are actually amounts which diminishes the value of the property. For example, if I am the donor and you will be the donor and let's say I will give you this 500,000 cash but you need to give the half of that amount to the local government or to the charity because it's pandemic and we want to contribute something to the government so that is actually a diminution but essentially if you are the donny you are not benefited with the other half of the amount what you will gain is just the net amount after you deducted the condition the portion that i want to be given to another person so that is diminution in the value of the property so those are the four items which are allowed to be deducted from the gross gift before the train law there there was actually another one and that was a dory which is not allowed now it was already repelled by the train law okay so Let's now discuss how to compute donor's tax. It's actually plain and simple. So, unlike estate tax, the computation of donor's tax is straightforward and simple. You don't have to memorize many complicated rules about absolute community, conjugal partnership of gains. You don't have to do that here, okay? So, there's nothing like that in donor's tax. It's plain, straightforward, and simple. The tax for each calendar year shall be 6% computed on the basis of the total gifts in excess of 250,000 pesos exempt gift made during the year so we before we could um, subject our net gift um, to 6% we need to deduct the 250,000 and that 250,000 is actually an annual I mean yearly exemption limit that is according to section 99 of the NRC as amended by section 28A of the Republic Act 10963. So let's have an illustration. Mr. Juan de la Cruz and Mrs. Juan de la Cruz made the following donations out of conjugal funds and properties in 2021 as follows. So we have a donation on February 14 to A a legitimate son, a brand new motor vehicle with a fair market value of 170000 an account of A's graduation from college. Okay. And also another donation on May 17 to B, a legitimate daughter, an account of B's marriage to be celebrated on September 25, 2021, a house and lot with a fair market value of 2 million pesos. And on June 14, another donation to see a brother of Mrs. De La Cruz an amount of 850,000 pesos with a condition that C must give the 300,000 to the local government for the purchase of necessary materials to fight COVID-19. And on December 25, another donation to D, a legitimate son, a residential house and lot with fair market value of 1.2 million but subject to a condition that D would assume the mortgage and the tenants in the amount of 400,000 pesos. So before we jump into the solution, let us first discuss this um, donations given. So by the way, these donations are all taken from the conjugal funds and properties of the husband and the wife, Mr. and Mrs. De La Cruz. So, on February 14, there was no uh, allowed deduction. There was no, yeah, right? On May 17, another donation, but there was no allowable deduction. But on June 14, um, 
to say the brother the amount donated was 850 but there was a condition that C must give the 300 to the local government there was actually a diminution in the value of the property and that is amounting to 300,000 therefore that 300,000 could be allowed as a deduction from the gift the 850,000 essentially C will not benefit from the 300,000 pesos he will only benefit the 850 minus 300 the net amount there okay and as for D, um, there was also another allowable deduction that is the mortgage encumbrances. So there, the amount, the fair value of the property was 1.2, but um, there was a mortgage to be assumed by D, an amount of 400,000. Okay, so let us now proceed to our solution. By the way, when we solve this problem, we will solve this in cumulative basis and transactional basis. Okay, so let's have here Juan and Maria. And we will start with the donation made on February 14, that is to A. The gross gift was 170,000 and we will split that by two. So Mr. Juan will get the gross gift of 85 and Miss Maria will get 85. And there was no deduction. So, the current net gift is only 85,000 pesos. And also, we will add prior net gift with May during this year. And there was none. This is the first donation made by Mr. Juan and Miss Maria in the year 2021. So, there was no prior net gift. So, we will have total net gifts. Okay? And we will deduct the exemption threshold of 250. Therefore, the exemption threshold is higher than the actual net gifts. Therefore, there was no taxable gift at that time. So, Mr. Juan and Ms. Maria will have zero tax. Okay? So, Mr. Juan and Ms. Maria will still be required to file donor's tax return for their donation to A, but they will pay nothing because the taxable net gift is zero. Okay? So, that's it. Now let's go to the donation to B, which was made on um, May 17. Uh, gross gift was 2 million. Actually, the entire amount was 2 million. But again, since it was taken out of conjugal funds, we will split that by 2 for Mr. Juan and Miss Maria. So 1 million for each spouse. And then we will deduct. There was no deductions allowed for that donation. So we will get a current net gift of 1 million pesos. So we will also add, remember, on February 14, we have or they have a gift to A, their son. So we will also add that prior net gift. So we will get total net gifts of 1 million and 85,000 pesos. And from then, we will deduct the exemption threshold of 250,000 pesos. So, our taxable net gifts for both Juan and Maria is 835,000 pesos. We will just simply multiply that by 6%. So, therefore, the donor's tax due is 50,100 pesos for Mr. Juan and Mrs. Maria. Now, since they have a donor's tax due, Mrs. Juan and Mrs. Maria will now file again in separate. They will file um, separately, okay, Mr. Juan will pay 50100 and also Miss Maria. So again, that's the tax they should be paying. So we will deduct any taxes paid previously. But again, remember, in the donation to A, there was no tax paid because there was no taxable net gift. So we will just deduct zero. And then donor tax payable is 50100 So now let's go to the donation to C. On June 14, Mr. Juan and Miss Maria again donated to C. The amount was 850000 pesos. Remember, C was a brother of Mrs. Maria. And he was given a cash of 
50,000 pesos. So we will just split that by two. So Mr. Juan will have a donation to C of 425 and so will Miss Maria. And remember, there was a condition that um, C will give the 300,000 to the local government to purchase necessary um, materials for the fight of COVID-19. So there was actually a diminution in the value of the property donated or the thing donated. So you will deduct that was 300. So again, we will split that by two. So both the gross gift and the deductions are split into two. You might be asking what if the property or thing donated was taken or donated out of the exclusive property of the husband or the wife then of course since it's exclusive you don't have to split the donation by two because it would be exclusive so for example if Juan donated the entire 850 out of his exclusive property then Juan will be the one to declare that gift and not Maria okay because again ass assumption wise that was an exclusive property of Juan but in this case since the fund the cash was taken out of conjugal funds so we will just split that by two okay so we will get the current net gift of 275,000 pesos and we will add the other the prior net gift remember the gift to A and to B the 85,000 in the 1 million, we will add that here. So our total net gifts is 1,360,000 pesos and we will now deduct the exemption threshold of 250 to get taxable net gifts. Okay, and that's it. It's a repetition of the process. You just accumulate every net gifts from the prior to current. Just accumulate from January to Je to February and so on until you finish the entire year if there is certainly a donation every month. So after we get taxable net gifts, we'll just simply multiply that by 6% and then we'll get our donor's tax due. But remember, there was a donor's tax payment previously of 50100 okay? So we will deduct that. So therefore, on June 14, the donor stocks payable, due and payable, is only 16,500 pesos. Okay, that's it. Actually, you can get this 16,500 pesos by simply multiplying 275 by 6%. If you multiply 275 by 6%, you will get 16,500. That's a shortcut. I'm showing you this because this is how it is presented in the Bayer form, in the 1800 Bayer form. So this is how it is presented. It should be presented like this, but you can have a shortcut if you are, for example, if you are in school solving for problems like quizzes, exams, you can actually just multiply this by 6% and you will get 16,500. That's it. Okay? Now, let's have the final, the last gift made during the year, which was to D on December. Okay? So, the gift was actually 1,200,000 real property and we will just split that as what we did in our first three um, gifts and we will deduct the mortgage the encumbrance uh, assumed by um d so 600 minus 200 we will get a current net gift of 400 thousand pesos and again we will add all those prior net gifts remember 85 thousand pesos plus 1 million plus 275 thousand in the previous three gifts so we will add 1,360 to get the total net gifts so we will get 1,760 for Mr. Juan and Miss Maria now we will also again deduct the exemption threshold of 250,000 pesos to get the taxable net gifts okay that's 1,510,000 and multiply that by 6% this is actually a repetition again just a repetition of the process okay current net gifts add prior net gifts then deduct the exemption of 250 multiply by 6% jet that's it plain simple and straightforward and we will get 
the donors tax due okay uh, there were actually donations or mean donors taxes paid previously number one the 50,100 that was a donation to me and number two that was 16,500 to donation to C or a total of 66,600 this donors tax previously paid this was the donors tax due in the previous computation if you're going to go back uh, with this video so the donors tax due and payable for Mr. Juan Miss Maria will be 24,000 pesos that's it or you can just simply multiply the 400,000 by 6% that's it 4,000 times 6%, you will get 24,000. That's the shortcut, okay? But again, this is how I presented because this is how it is uh, shown in the BR form 1800, the donor tax return. So that's it for donor tax. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, click the bell, so you'll be notified whenever we upload new videos. And I will see you in our next topic. Bye!